what's going on guys? Hopefully you're having an awesome day. I appreciate you guys coming back for another video. So I'm just gonna pick up where I left off from the last video, cleaning and showing you guys some snakes and showing you how they're doing after coming back from a four day vacation. Uh, so this is the Argentine boa and she is getting very, very large. She is now on large rats every two to three weeks. So that means more and bigger messes in her cage. So I have to clean hers out. I'm not gonna show you the cleaning process with the PVCs because I actually have to like get in there and clean everything out. So it's hard to get that stuff on the camera, but I'll show you guys the, the snakes as I pull them out and, and do the cleaning. But this girl is amazing, growing very quickly. She's about four-ish, maybe, going on five, I know that. And uh, beautiful snake, the black and just a basic black and white, pure blood. Uh, Argentine, and I do have her on the paper. I do have the other snakes on Repti Chip. I don't know why she's the only one that's on the paper, but I am out of Repti Chip, so I can't put more in. Um, I do use the construction paper. You can get a huge roll at Lowe's or Home Depot for under 20 bucks, and it works very well. The only thing that I would complain about it is that if, or in high humidity, or if water gets spilled on it, uh, or if she urinates on it, it does tend to mold pretty fast. So every week to two weeks, um, easy change out. With her, she's very, very nice or calm when she's out of her cage. But when she's in her cage, she's extremely defensive or food driven. So very nervous. And I don't like her in the PVCs with the big windows because she does hit really, really hard on the glass. And I'm just really worried that at some point she's going to break her jaws or she's going to break her, uh, she's going to break her neck. And that's why I kind of want to get the big pull out tubs from ARS or Freedom Breeder. I'd probably go with ARS since they're closer to me and a little bit cheaper, um, with the small windows or the no windows, just so she doesn't have any striking issues at all. So. I'm gonna put her back and, well, I gotta clean her case and then I'll put her back. So, I'll just hold on, I just wanna show you guys. So I had Pop-Tart's cage open and she came wandering out on her own and is enjoying her little water area that I need to fill up and hopefully now when it's out, she goes to the bathroom, but um, I didn't think I was gonna be able to show you guys her because she was in the very back of the enclosure. But now that she is out, she knows that around the corner there is the back of this, of her enclosure. And I hate when she goes back there. And I think she knows that because there's not much room between the enclosure and the wall. So it's very difficult to get her out. So I don't mind her roaming around the room. She can't really do anything or get anywhere. So we'll just see what happens with her. And I'm going to put her in there and clean her cage. All right, so this is the second bigger snake's cage that I do have to clean out. And this girl right here is just a common basic boa, no morph or anything like that. And she is not to be confused with the red-tailed boa, but she does have some pretty good size on her. She is almost five years old, I would say. And I I have all of my snakes as they were babies, but I do like her the tail on her, even though it's a really nice pattern. It's kind of the, uh, a rusty red and that's not a true red tail. You guys have seen my Surinams and my Guyanas and they do have the blood red tails. And I'm sure you've seen much better snakes uh, in other people's collections. But this girl right here was my very first boa. And I got this boa and then my albino went from the exact same person. And just getting into boas, I really didn't know if I liked them at the time. Now I love them, but this was when I had two ball pythons and a king snake. So I was looking at the albino and I was like, well, I don't want to pay $200 or whatever it was. And then, so this girl right here was like 40 bucks or 50 bucks. Um, at the time forever ago, everything was a lot cheaper than they are now. I was like, well, I'll just get her, see how it goes. And so I got her and I was like, I really like boas. And I was like, man, I'm, like I really wish I got uh, the albino because the albino was really cool. So I went back 
to the next month at the reptile show to the same guy and I was like, I really like uh, the one that I got from you, so I'll just pick up the other one. So within a matter of pretty much a month and a half to two months, I had two boas and then I've just been hooked on boas ever since then and now I have uh, who knows how many, 15 or more. I mean, I really don't count. I just keep buying them. Um, which is probably not the best thing to do, but you guys, you guys understand and, and you, you know how it goes. So I'm going to clean her cage and I'm going to put her back, but this girl is just a really, really nice snake and don't, you shouldn't sleep on the normals because the normals have crazy patterns, crazy tail patterns, t crazy tail colors, and they're just very, very awesome snakes to have. She's very sweet and docile when she's out. But kind of like the Argentine, she can get a little defensive, and she is on large rats as of now. It's taken me years and years to put her on large rats. I don't, you know, I don't have any plans of breeding her, so I don't, I never needed to push her with the food. Uh, but she's, she's getting up there on, on the size, so we'll check out the next snake in the lineup. And then, just so you guys are aware of what's going on, Pop-Tart made her way up the step ladder. And she is now trying to open up a door. Snakes are intelligent and they can open doors. That's what I'm told. And what people tell me is that a snake can open a door and they're gonna find me in my bedroom. And they're gonna size me up in my bed and then they're gonna eat me for a snack, which we all know is not true. So let me get this albino out and we'll continue on. All right, so this is the albino boa and just just the basic regular albino not head for anything um so as they're babies they're extremely vibrant and very bright on the colors their tails are very very orange and they have really nice uh saddles on them but this girl's the same age as the uh as my common boa and then you can see that she really has faded out a lot, which is common with a lot of the snakes that they do fade. Uh, but the albinos definitely fade out a lot more. A lot of people are getting into the sun glows because they do hold their colors as adults. Very vibrant, really nice looking snakes. But again, they're probably double or triple the price of a albino. And I think you can get an albino right now for under $200. Maybe, I'm not sure what they're really going for, but I know they're not that expensive because there's so many other morphs out there that people really, really want. Um, but people do like to add in the albinos with a lot of other stuff and it makes really cool combinations. Um, but this girl's really sweet. Never had any issues with her. And again, she is she's on bigger mediums to the larges, even though she's not the same um, thickness as the uh, as the common, she still looks really good. It has some really nice uh, size on her for pretty much what she is. So she still does look really good, though I think. So let's put her back, and then we'll check out the uh, the ghost, which a lot of people like the most. All right, so this is the ghost, uh, 2017 female. She is a 100% head for albino, which is really cool. Um, not that it really matters if you don't breed, but again, um, I don't feed them as their breeders, so they might look a little on the thinner side, just because I don't need to push the food into them uh, for their four year mark on the breeding. But the hypo is, I or the ghost is, I believe it's hypo and anery, so, um, you could, if you got the albino out of this or added a visual albino into it, then you should make moon glows. Um, and then if you don't hit the ant or if you don't hit the hypo, then you would get the snow. So if you put another ghost with her, you could get super, uh, super ghosts, or you could, if you hit on the, uh, the het on the albinos, then you could get moons and uh, sun glows. Or you could just put a snow with her and see what would happen. I think that'd be a cool breeding combo. I do have the male snow, so could go with her. But every time you put an albino to an albino, uh, 
you do have the risk of having babies with deformed eyes or no eyes or one eye. So there is the risk of having multiple babies that you would not be able to sell and you'd have to keep them and raise them. And I, unfortunately I do know, uh, I think a lot of bigger breeders don't want to deal with the messed up snakes. So they just kind of humanely kill them off. But this girl right here is very, very sweet. Really nice, loves to, to climb and hang out with you. I can hang out with her all day with, with no issues at all. And Mountain Dew or Pop-Tart over there is kind of wanting to go back behind her cage. So this is the ghost. I think, I think they are, as in this form and not with the visual albino, I think they're overlooked because they're not a crazy pattern on them. It's not a crazy color. It just is the grays, the blacks, the browns, and the whites just all go together. It's just really, really nice with a really cool, <clears throat> the circles on the tails. I just, I like ghosts a lot. Probably one of my favorites. So we'll put her back and then we'll check out the anacondas. All right, so we have Pop-Tart down here creating some chaos. And then we have Mountain Dew right here, which would, he would or she would do the exact same. Um, really hoping Nerd gets uh, their green anacondas fed and socialized and on the market sooner than later before winter hits because I would love to get a male for both of these and it's going to be a bummer if they're not ready and then winter hits for either state and then I don't have to wait another six months. Uh, to get one, but I would definitely put a, a deposit on it if I have to. But this girl looks really, really cool. And the difference between the two of them, other than the size, is Mountain Dew has really nice bright bands behind her eyes. And Pop-Tart does too, but I think Mountain Dews are a little bit brighter. But again, once you've seen one green anaconda, you've pretty much seen them all green with the black circles and this is her cage for now uh, she's doing very well in it honestly I think Pop-Tart could do very well in a cage this size also but she is in the almost nine foot cage which hopefully and from what I'm told should be fine for an adult but again uh, we'll see what happens we'll see how she grows and it's gonna be many many years down the road before she even gets the half of the length of or with or whatever that she's going to need an upgrade. So I can say that both of these snakes are very calm, very relaxing snakes, although anacondas are known for being unpredictable. So precautions are taken all of the time with both of them. And as they grow up, definitely. So I'll try to get, I'll let them, I don't know if I want, Mountain Dew out and about. She's kind of small. But I'll let Pop-Tart hang out for just a little bit longer. And that's pretty much it. So went through all of the cages. I know I didn't go through every single one of them with you guys, but they are all alive. They do have water. Some need more than others still. But everybody's out of the poop and out of the big messes for right now. So we all know it only takes a couple days for that to get all messed up. So Appreciate the support on the channel, guys. Really appreciate you guys coming back for more videos and all of the great advice that you're giving me. I am still newish at this, so it helps when uh, people will give me good advice and helps me out through the journey with the animals. And I'll see you guys on the next video.